Morning everybody. Uh, we're expecting a lovely day here today in Ireland. Again, I have to prefix this video by claiming that I'm ne not an expert. What I'm about to present to you is only my interpretation. In fact, it could be very well specific to my business. We refer to Gardner engines here as being of various types. We've got your ordinary run-of-the-mill everyday automotive engine, you've got an industrial engine and you've got a marinized engine and you've got an original uh, proper proper inverted commas marine engine so we've got those classifications and what i'm going to try and do is take you through those classifications and how i understand them i hope i can make that clear we're going to start with from a video point of view the simplest of these type of engines. This we would consider an industrial engine. Now I know for a fact that this one drove a, ge um, a generator and it was probably housed in a, a lighthouse. The lighthouses all the way around the British Isles um, traditionally used Gardner engines. They actually had three there at a time I've been told. Uh, one was in use, one was being restored and one was in standby. So this is a 3LW. So what are the characteristics of this engine? Well, the most significant one is that there's no adjustment of the throttle, or very little. The throttle is in effect fixed. And you'll notice there's no advance and retard mechanism. That's all fixed. Because these engines would have ran at a constant 1500 RPM. So there was no need for a conventional throttle. A little bit of adjustment here, but not very much i'd say i don't know maybe five percent or something like that um, the next characteristic is a very heavy flywheel the advantage of this is that it holds the engine at a very constant rpm so if you're welding for example whenever you strike the arc with the welder the engine won't really slow down so your voltage won't drop all because of the momentum stored in this big heavy flywheel otherwise you know, the, the heads, the block, um, the crankshaft is really, really standard. Okay, I hope that's clear. We'll move now on to the next least interesting engine, and that's an automotive engine. Okay, this is the, the next or another um, not that interesting engine, an en engine from a video point of view. Um, this could very well be an automotive engine. You'll notice it's got conventional throttle. The flywheel will be a light flywheel. The Gardner instruction books suggest that we fit as light a flywheel as possible. We're not terribly worried about the consistency in RPM um, or uh, vibrations in a truck um, or in a car for that matter. Um, okay, in a truck it wouldn't have these rev counters here. They're, they're just there for convenience. Um, I have featured this engine before in um, a, a standalone video that I did. So we've got the conventional throttle. We've got a, a light flywheel. We have no extended crankshaft on the front. You can see the crankshaft is quite short there because it's only driving a fan. There would normally be a fan up here. Um, but the point that I want to make is that you can take this engine here and install it in a boat and it'll work perfectly well. Okay, if you're taking a lot of power off the front, which is unlikely on an engine of this size, uh, you would need an extended crankshaft. But under normal circumstances, you don't. So that's it. We've got conventional throttle, conventional advance and retard, light flywheel, no extended um, crankshaft. That's it. Okay. Here we have uh, an original marine, proper marine Gardner engine. Now, what are its characteristics? Uh, the main characteristic is that it's got an extended crankshaft. The, the crankshaft extends out further than it would do in an automotive engine or an industrial engine. The reason for this is that fishermen will very often take more power off the front of the engine to drive hydraulics, to drive deck washes, all sorts of things. So the first characteristic is an extended 
Thanks, Sean. Uh, on this particular engine, it's also got uh, a direct water pump. This pump here actually sucked sea water, would you believe, salt water, in from the sea and pushed it around the engine. Uh, barbaric, you might think. But um, they were quite successful and quite common. And the corrosion didn't seem to be a problem. Uh, there's no thermostat. Uh, I'm not too sure how the temperature was controlled. The engine just established its own control uh, whenever it was underway. Uh, um, water pump sucking water in from the sea and pushing it around the engine. Extended crankshaft. Uh, heavy flywheel. The flywheel would be heavy. Now this particular engine has a light uh, flywheel fitted um, because it probably used uh, um, a modern hydraulic gearbox. Um, this shot here shows you a heavy marine flywheel which would suit the original Gardner mechanical gearbox. So that's all very interesting. Uh, the throttle um, is a conventional throttle. Uh, Ah, yes, the throttle's here, right? That's your throttle. It's a little bit stuck at the minute, but we'll, we'll sort that out. Um, so conventional throttle, extended crankshaft, um, oil cooler, uh, seawater pump. Now, modern engines, modern proper marine engines, will have a centrifugal type water pump fitted, much, much simpler and, and, and much better than this. Uh, modern engines, of course, will not use uh, direct cooling like this, they'll use uh, a heat exchanger and a JASCO pump. Whenever I talk, whenever I use the word modern here, I mean relatively modern in the Gardner, in the Gardner world. This engine also had a reciprocating bilge pump here. Um, it's missing at the minute, but there would originally been no, another variation on this fitted here, which acted as a bilge pump. And there was a clutch here, you screwed in a clutch to activate it and it emptied the bilge. Somebody has done away with that. They fitted on this pulley here, which would have been belt driven from here. And again, it would have driven uh, a modern uh, Japsco type pump. Right, originally this indicator would have been fitted on here so that you could see the flow of salt water through um, from this pump here. Uh, we'd have to refit that. That's if we're sticking to direct cooling. As I said, the modern variation of this will have a heat exchanger and uh, a modern shaft scope pump. It will not be pulling in directly salt water. So this is some obvious features on a proper marine 8 LXB in this instance. You'll notice the original header tank, massive header tank, and you'll notice that the, the uh, thermostat housing is completely different and there's twin thermostats in there. So those are just some things that you can look out for on a proper uh, marine, original marine 8 LXB. Here we've got a marine gearbox oil cooler. Those uh, darker pipes there, the oil and the fatter pipes, are the coolant exchanging heat with each other. Again, you're not going to find that on an industrial engine or an, an automotive engine. You could possibly find it on a marinized engine though. Now here we've got an original of original Gardner engines. This is an 8L3B that we restored some years ago. Um, that blue item there in the centre is a proper circ heat exchanger. And you'll get those same circ heat exchangers fitted on all sorts of Gardners, particularly on the six-cylinder um, 8LXB. Again, notice the extended crankshaft at the front, original Gardner header tank at the top, and the big long oil cooler there down along the side. Wonderful, wonderful piece of machinery. Here we have a classic proper marine 6LXB. You'll notice it's got all the features there that I mentioned before. It's even got the oil cooler, which is not shown here on the other side. And here we have another look at this same engine just from a different view. 4LW. Again this is an engine uh, which we marinized and it was intended for 
uh, a narrowboat on the English canals, but actually ended up driving the bow thruster on a large boat in America. Notice the large front pulley there for driving a modern alternator. You can see it up the top there. It all worked well. This is really something special. This is, uh, again, a proper marine 4LK, really very rare. Notice the original header tank up at the top, and it's fitted there with a, a self-changing gearbox. This is really quite a, a rare item. Here we've got what I <clears throat> here we've got what I might refer to as a classical marinized engine. Notice that it has a Bowman heat exchange there, not the original Cirque, which ran down on the starboard side of the engine. Notice also that it's got an air, an air filter. Uh, in my experience, air filters are not very common on marine engines, but they do help to re reduce noise a little bit. Um, the next photograph is just of the same engine from a different view. And then finally, we've got the engine fitted with an SF automatic marine gearbox uh, ready to ship. Now at this point I really must emphasize that these marinized Gardner engines as distinct from proper inverted commas marine engines work every bit as well really with the possible exception of the long crankshaft at the front. But even if you're using a short crankshaft at the front and you're taking a lot of power off there there are methods there are means of uh, addressing that problem. Traditionally, the short shaft was inclined to break, but there are ways around that. So there you have it. Um, I can close the, the active part of the video at this point by again emphasizing the fact that marinized engines are fine. They'll run and they'll give years and years and years of service just the same as the original engines. Okay, um, I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly enjoyed putting it together. And if you've got any questions, just ask them as normal. Thank you so much.